and welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Oh, this is a very good day. Right now, you join me just outside Stockholm, Sweden, following a yellow, yes, a yellow Porsche Carrera GT. Mr. JWW, get your checkbook out. Get it out. You're gonna buy this. You need to. we just talk about how outrageous this whole car is I mean firstly how many yellow Carrera GTs have you seen I honestly can't remember if I've ever seen any usually they're silver or maybe black and okay fine I might have seen an occasional red one but this yellow color just works so well it flatters the lines of the car perfectly now if you haven't noticed this car is immaculate it is one of the lowest mileage Carrera GTs I've ever heard of and the whole car is protected with PPF even underneath the car has PPF look at this interior <gasps> absolutely incredible yellow on black all this exposed carbon fiber but I mean you have to look at this engine bay I mean how this car is ever driven I do not know because I would be too anal to let this car go on the road I would want it to be this perfect this immaculate all the time I have to say a huge thanks oh something's starting up 911 GTS winning I have to say a huge thanks to GT Meister for bringing this car out today because it's not actually the car that I'm filming we've come down to showroom by Riddermark one of these sort of top high-end prestige supercar dealerships in the Stockholm area to kind of focus on and feature a rival to this car because we all know about the holy trinity the LaFerrari the P1 and the 918 Spyder well the generation before that actually consisted of the Carrera GT, the Ferrari Enzo, and the Mercedes McLaren SLR. Now, we all know that the Enzo is crazy. It's a Ferrari and it's worth well over one million pounds these days. However, these two cars, the Carrera GT and the SLR, still feel a little bit undervalued considering their sort of position in the history of automotive. So, we've seen this out on the road. I got up close and personal with it, showed you guys some of the details. Now let's check out this SLR. It's oh not God. that these, easy to get into. No, but, but these doors are super light. Wow. Once, once you're in, you sit really, really good. And the seats are quite firm. <laughs> um, everyone, welcome, Eric. Uh, you are founder of showroom the or? showroom part of it yes i am okay yep, correct. amazing well thank you so much for having me down and thank you for this opportunity and experience thanks for coming uh my first time even sitting in an slr it's oh, an event it's an event the it startup much... the startup alone is worth half the car more of an event than i thought it was going to be uh anyway we're now going to pull out this quite amazing showroom which has just got tons of cars that i want to buy dotted all around it um especially that gt3 is lovely i might um, add that this car you know, being a high-end car, it does not have parking sensors, reverse camera, and the world's most longest front bonnet. <laughs> it honestly feels like we're directing a boat around this area. Uh, I'm not much. quite sure where that front end ends, uh, but it's super cool. So yeah, we're going to go and find a find a sort of road um, where, unbelievably, I'm going to be jumping behind the wheel of this car. Uh, just quickly, because uh, you're a man who knows a lot more about things than I do, uh, let's just talk about this car because I touched on it a second ago. The Carrera GT, Enzo, and the SLR were the sort of holy trinity of 10 years before the LaFerrari P1 and 918, right? Yeah. So this was a really special hypercar of its day. It really was. I and mean, I think what happened was people thought, expected to be more like a Mercedes. They thought it was going to be like, you know, kind of, I won't say boring, but more like an SL600, SL55, you know, kind of an old man's car. Yeah, absolutely. Way. They never drove it. I think the biggest critics of the car are the guys who have never driven the car. Okay, interesting, because it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in any way. I mean, this car, to me, feels like driving a Carrera GT with an automatic. Oh, wow, that's a big claim. It's very, 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 very direct. You can feel the engine no matter what you do. You can feel it through your arms, through your feet, through your, through your butt, put it that way. And uh, the steering response, the uh, throttle response, and the brakes, which are kind of, uh, I don't know what to call them, but it's either on or off, put it that okay. way. I'll remember that when I, when I get Nothing my Nothing in between. <sighs> I don't 
don't know where the front of the car is. Yeah, no idea. yeah it's so unnerving, but super cool. Um, all right, let me try and get a little bit of positioning going on here. Yeah, to me, a true supercar is all about character. Yeah. Does that it be good? Does it be great? It has to give character. Something extra like the it's kind of value. You can't put a very put a word on it. That's exactly it. It's not always about speed and performance to make a supercar. As long as it has a personality and something that makes you smile and gives you that sense of occasion. So I just want to show this on camera. That's the start stop button, which I just think is amazing. And you're right, it's got a weighty feel to it, doesn't it? I thought it was gonna be really cheap plastic, but it's not. Yeah. Um, and then straight over and down for drive. Check all the mirrors, and I think, uh, yeah, that's an indicator. We are good to go. I, I, I wish, I wish that there was a sort of fourth dimension where you guys could feel the rumble that is coming through my seat and up my spine from driving this car. It's crazy how much feel you get. It's a real muscle car feel, I think, rather than necessarily a supercar feel. And immediately from the sort of five degrees of steering input I've just put into this car, it's definitely direct. <laughs> it's not a loose goose. Yeah, it's gonna go exactly where I want it to go, I imagine, once I start pushing on. And I'm also aware that under my right foot is a lot of power. Uh, so 5.5 litre AMG engine in this one. Uh, and what were we doing horsepower wise? 612. 612. Um, now I- It's the torque that really gets it. The torque. I mean, just with this twin uh, supercharger in the car, I mean, it has, I mean, this car will let the tires loose first, second, third gear. <laughs> first, second, the, third. Uh, anti the spin like Yeah, like just crazy. lighting up. It definitely feels like it wants to get up and go. I don't know why I was expecting anything less, but from the outside, and my expectations were always that it was going to be slightly soft, maybe a little bit cumbersome, have this slightly dodgy gearbox, and just not be a sort of hypercar anymore. It would have aged badly. But immediately, I'm picking up in a lot of different elements that point at something completely different to that so it's quite I exciting believe the car is very big it's very long and it looks heavy but it's not i mean this car is i'm not actually exactly around 1500 kilos which is not a lot for a car of this size this size and with that much power yeah. with the transaxle the engine in the middle transmission in the rear i mean it's very very well balanced for being such a long big car sorry that <laughs> What's the brakes? It's a very strange brake pedal and feel, which you did mention before I got behind the wheel, and I forgot all your advice and yeah. <laughs> tips. But uh, it does also get up and go. And as you say, yeah, you, that's the sort of first thing that you're noticing is how light it is. I think from the directness of the steering, but also the, the want to get up and go that it's got. It is still comfortable though. I mean, the ride is quite hard, but you could quite happily do some long miles in this thing, I suppose. I see on the highway in a bit, it does have some higher road noise than you would think from a Mercedes though. Mm -hmm. You know, big, big tires and being the carbon fiber, it's not extremely well insulated, you know what I mean? Sure. There's that supercharger whine as well. That's nuts. And you can feel everything, the engine and through the seat. Yep. I, I, I love it. I mean, you, you know where the car is all the time, how much traction you have. Yep. You can feel it. <sighs> this is just... I wish I, I mean, I'm using about 25, 30% throttle is at least what it feels like. And the car is just telling me to push harder and harder with such an evil noise as well. That dark rumble is just going, come on. <laughs> it's Thor calling me a pussy through an accelerator pedal. I don't know what other car has the same, the same character of noise, to be honest. Absolutely. It's a real dark powerhouse. But when you start pushing on, are you confident in those brakes? Do you get to learn those brakes? Because it's the only thing that's making me a little bit nervous now about going any faster. Yeah, once well, you get the temperature in them, but being the first generation carbon ceramic brakes, yeah. you need to get them hot before they actually work really well. Okay. But when, when, you, when you push it hard, it will bite. It will bite, yeah. It, yeah. It start for sure. It's just about, I think it's more about the pedal feel than actually yeah. the brakes themselves. The pedal feel, honestly, is kind of horrible. Yeah, <laughs> it is really it's horrible. It's insecure. Yeah, that's exactly, that's why it's an insecurity that I've got, because it is a button. It's not a sort of, it just feels like suddenly they just come on and so... Uh, and that air brake in the back, remember a very famous TV show mentioned that? It yeah. It's as much brake force like a Ford Fiesta or whatever it was. But at a higher speed, you know, when you, when you hit the brakes, I mean, you really feel the stop. And that air brake keeps it very stable, okay. keeps it flat. It doesn't dive. Sure. You know what I mean? Wow. So it's effective. This is nothing like I was expecting, and it's really exciting. <laughs> like, I, my heart is pounding quite a bit. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a lot more mellow. And a few people had told me, and even before we got in, you were saying that it's, it's a really raucous experience, but I don't know why. I just always have thought, oh, no, probably not. And 
it gets dismissed so quickly in comparison to a Carrera GT and, a, and an Enzo, this just seems to be a little bit forgotten where the modern, more modern generation, the McLaren P1, which I uh, could say was a successor, obviously not, but it's sort of what followed on, go right here, is heralded. This yeah, is when just... I bought this car, this is the first SLR I'd driven at that point, so I honestly had no idea what to expect. Yeah. I bought it in Finland, it was a famous WRC rally driver who owned the car previously. Okay. You turn right again. Turn right. And uh, it was snowing. Okay. So it was sunny when he got there, like great, test drive the car, sure. nope, snowstorm. <laughs> so I put it in the trailer, drove it home, didn't didn't drive a meter in the car. Yeah. I had no idea what to expect. Got it home here to Sweden and two days later uh, the snow finally disappeared. Like, alright. Here we go. Here I go. Tires in the car were from 2006. Oh my god. You know, so the tread pattern was fine, but obviously they were probably you know, rock hard. Yeah. And I went out, I'm like, all right, got the temperature up warm, you know, just got a little bit used to the car, and I just floored it. I mean, that light, first, second, third gear, the car was just going, you know, that wasn't going sideways with the control, you know what I mean? But being a long wheelbase in the car, there's no real surprises. Okay. It will go sideways. Sure. It will let go of the tires with the differential in the car, and being a long wheelbase, it was still very, it felt kind of safe in the car, you know what I mean? You the know, weight balance is nice, and yeah. it's not an unexpected snap like you sometimes get in a mid-engine car. Exactly. Very easy to drift. Very I'll easy to much. drift. <laughs> I was. This is the coolest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, let's just go drifting in an SLR. <laughs> I'm quite. I don't really know where to start. It's. I really like this. One thing I have to say is, amazing as it was, and as surprising as it was, I definitely lacked a bit of confidence in it. It's. It's quite a sort of overwhelming and slightly intimidating car, and I don't know if it is to do with the size or the lightness or just the fact that you don't know what's coming. That. I didn't really feel like I wanted to push on that much. It's something that I felt like I wanted to sort of slowly build up to that speed. You can get into quite a lot of modern cars, M3s, Huracans, and you can get pretty quick in them pretty quickly because they feel very safe, inherently safe. And whilst this, I'm sure, is great on a twisty mountain road, I wouldn't want to jump straight onto one. I, I really feel like I need to build up and learn the car more before I started doing that. But anyway, huge thanks to Eric and of course to GT Meister for bringing me down here in the first place. An eye-opening experience. And you know, this was one of the Holy Trinity before the Holy Trinity, if that makes any sense. So a kind of forgotten car and a car that shouldn't be forgotten. So if you ever get the chance, go out in an SLR. I think there's a hurricane happening. I'm gonna step outside. That got real loud real quick. Uh, they have a detailing bay here, so uh, as you can see, tons more cars, tons more Volvos knocking around in the, uh, in the back, back forecourt, would we call it. But yeah, absolutely amazing day. I'm still, I, I have to say, I'm still obsessed with that Carrera GT, and if push came to shove, I personally would still pull, pick Carrera GT or Enzo, because they're more supercar or hypercar, whilst the McLaren SLR feels more like a muscle car. That's it. That's my end result. That's my end thought. McLaren SLR, Mercedes McLaren SLR, is a monstrous muscle car, whilst the Carrera GT and Enzo are definitely hypercars of their generation. I hope you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up if you have, and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.